So while you're working in ZBrush, especially when you're early on, you may accidentally hit T on your keyboard. Uh, now it pops up a warning menu you didn't used to. Uh, and let's say you said always switch. And essentially what that's telling ZBrush is, hey, I want to stop using this tool and go grab another one. Well, it's also going to drop it to your canvas. So if you do go grab another tool, for example, this PolyMesh 3D, and then drag it on your canvas, you're going to see you're going to have a dog and a star. Of course, by now you already know, you can go into edit mode, and you can uh, click and drag in your canvas and rotate around the star, and then just simply hit Control N to clear the dog out of your canvas. But just be aware that, you know, if you'd accidentally go out of edit mode, you're like, oh my gosh, what just happened? Control N to clear your canvas, and you also don't lose anything. If I want to go back to my dog that I had already sculpted on, I can just click the dog here, drag it back out on my canvas, go into edit mode. Now, when you're first starting out with ZBrush, we go out of edit mode, and we hit Control N to clear our canvas, and you have the simple brush selected if you just click and drag. This is a 2.5D brush. So we have the tool palette over here and we have the simple brush selected. Then this big square is a palette. Same thing with this big square over here. It's a brush palette. This is a stroke palette, alpha palette, texture palette, and material palette. Anything that's a big square is going to be a palette. This little one down here is just recently used. So if I go in here and I say touch any of these things, and up here you're going to have quick pick which is like recently used as well. Uh, 3D meshes, these are your primitives and your Z spheres. And then down here is your 2.5D brushes, which again, ZBrush defaults to using the simple brush. So if you choose another one like the eraser brush, it's gonna have it selected in the palette. And also down here as a recently used, you can go through here and you can now erase this stuff out. And if we go back into our palette, choose a single layer brush, you can go through here and use this brush. Now. 2.5D stuff we'll get into later. I wouldn't worry about that too much right now. But I just wanted to explain that basic functionality of here's a palette and then here's recently used stuff. So again, if I want to clear my canvas, just hit Control N to clear my canvas. I want to sculpt on that dog again. Touch the dog in your recently used area. You can also find it in here if we go into our palette. It's all going to be in here in your 3D meshes. So if we hit the common key to go back into our light box, we're back in the tool menu. Say we double click the Nick Z humanoid male average, hit the comic key again. Now we have that, we have the dog, we have some recently used 2.5D brushes, and I can click on the palette and everything's right in here. So again, we'll go back to our dog, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, and we're right back where we started with the dog. Now I'm using the word canvas and document interchangeably. Essentially, if we go up here to this document menu, this is our document right here, this visible space that you're working within. And again, if you go in here to the document, you can actually save this document if you want to. Or you can go up here to texture, and you can grab your document. And when you do that, it converts it to a texture, and then you can go in here to export, and you can export your document as an image if you want. Let's go ahead and cancel out of that. And we'll go over here to our texture palette. Again, it's a palette, it's a big square. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna say turn texture off. Now, when we go in here to document, save as, we can save a document. Not a whole lot of reasons to do that nowadays, but you're going to see if we go in here to File, Save As, it's going to save a Z project, but down here you're going to see Canvas, and that's actually referring to, of course, your document. So again, I'm going to use those terms interchangeably. But 99 times out of 100, when I'm referring to your Canvas or your document, I'm really just referring to the area you're working in and the place you're going to cl click and drag to do classic ZBrush navigation. Let's talk a little bit more about document settings. I'm gonna take this preferences menu and we're gonna click that white button over here. And we've already opened this up by click, double clicking the divider here. So I know I can go into my document menu, grab that little white dot and just drag it over here. Now by default, while I'm recording, what I like to do is have this range slider over here to zero. That just makes the compression a little bit better. However, it also makes these colors almost identical. And there's some things I wanna bring up and I wanna bring some attention to your document size. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this back button here and just like when we were doing the thumbnail background we just click and drag off of there and it's going to select anything in your menu. So you're going to change your background color, feel free. I'm going to choose a slightly lighter gray so again we can see that document border. Now you're going to see a button in here that says new document. Uh, that's not control N. If I go out of edit mode and hit new document it's going to give me a brand new document and of course there's a W size option enabled so if you hover over that, that says auto fit window size. Now instead of doing that, again, I'm just going to hit control N to clear my canvas. And I really don't want to confuse things. It's actually a layer clear that's doing the clearing of your canvas. 
but let's not talk about that right now. Now you're gonna see some document stuff in here where you can change the width and the height. And then again, if I hit new document with W size, it's going to fill this area with my document size. Now there are gonna be some instances where you wanna over crank your document size. If you wanna say render something to a 4K or an 8K image, or a 1920 by 1080, or when we get a tiling, maybe a 1024 by a 1024. But just while you're working in ZBrush and you're sculpting, you don't want a huge document, just gonna waste resources. So having W size turned on and hitting new document is a pretty safe bet. In fact, if you wanna start ZBrush every session with that document size, which again is a pretty safe bet, you can go over here and you can say, save as startup doc. And now every time you start up ZBrush, you'll have that same document size and settings.